Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. It is Monday, and all of our guests today, including Elliot Friedman, standing by. Sponsored by Bassant Motors. We are back. Bassant is back. And so is the Bassant Motors Scholarship. Bigger than ever, with $33,000 oh. in scholarships awarded. Learn more at Bassant, B A S A N T Motors. Uh, dot com as we bring in from Hockey Night in Canada, the Thirty Two Thoughts Podcast, Elliot Friedman. Elliot, thanks for doing this, sir. How are you? I'm good. Although I just heard thirty six Donnie and Dolly promos in a row, so my head is spinning <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah, we have it on a loop. We we, we apologize uh, uh, for that. Hey, uh, before we get into all oh, this, is still hockey related, but uh, what is Rogers buyout of? Sorry to get into the corporate world and, and the business world here, mm-hmm. but we're we're going to do what is Rogers buyout of uh, Bell's MLSE shares mean for the NHL? Uh, given that uh, Rogers deal is about to expire, with the NHL is about to expire in a couple of years. Well, I think the two things are are kind of separate. Number one. Uh, Like ever since I got to Rogers, and this is my 11th season at Sportsnet, people told me that Ed Rogers would take control of MLSE. That was his goal. So before last week, he had 37 and a half, and Bell had 37 and a half. Larry Tannenbaum had uh, 20, and there was another smaller partner who had 5%. And so basically, what uh, Ed Rogers has done is he's bid, agreed with uh, Bell to buy their 37 and a half so he's gonna have 75 percent and that's everything that's the Leafs, that's the raptors that's the argos that's toronto fc that's the arena that's everything that comes with it he already owned the blue jays and there were people who told me donnie that uh, that was going to happen for a year okay. now i think what caught people by surprise was the timing it kind of came out of nowhere like i got some wind that something was up the night before but they kept it airtight like they didn't tell the nhl and the nba until the night before Hmm. uh that's how tight they kept the lid on it so um you know what will it do for the rights i still think i think rogers is going to bid for the rights you know everybody's wondering what amazon they're announcing their full group today and they're going to show some scenes from their show tonight um and they uh everybody's wondering what their future is going to be um you know tsn has told their staff that this does not mean they're giving up on programming um, you know, we'll see. Like the one thing I've learned about Ed Rogers over the years is very, very competitive. And if he wants something, he has proven that he will go out and try to get it. So, um, you know, we'll see. But I think one of the biggest questions just externally that people have is, you know, is the NHL, the NHL, if you look, the NFL just got a big media deal. The NBA is getting a big media deal. The NHL is going to want to do what it can to get a big media deal. And that. The question is going to be, what do they think gets them the biggest media deal? Okay, and Elliot, just as part of your answer there, you mentioned Amazon. I just thought I'd go on record as telling you that Rick is mm-hmm. really upset about that uh, partnership with uh, Amazon. Too many wires to hook up, too many cables, things like that. So if you can get the word out to the people at Amazon that Rick's not happy with it. Uh, not doing it, Elliot. Not it, doing it. It'd be appreciated. You know, Rick, this isn't 1946. You can it doesn't matter. An you I'm know, an old-fashioned like really, guy. It's you Get your kids to do it for you then, <laughs> or your dog. Not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. Not going to do it. Hey, Elliot, how much have you dealt with, with uh, Jake DeBrusque, L- Louis' kid? He's here in Vancouver. And i, I got to tell you, like the interviews that he's given so far, he just seems like a breath of fresh air, real intelligent kid. Who knows, he might enter the world of broadcasting. Well, he's too intelligent <laughs> for that. Enter the world of broadcasting one day. But how much have you dealt with him, and what do you think he's going to do for the Canucks? Well, he's smarter than his dad, I'll tell you that much. That's one thing. <laughs> Who I you work with, you. yeah. And who I work with, Louie. And, I, like, don't show him this because, like, Louie could beat me up. I don't want him to see <laughs> okay. this. You know, I, I think that, um, first of all, I've always liked dealing with Jake over the years. He's a really bright guy. He's a really determined guy. And, you know, I, I think it's going to be interesting. Like, in the last few years in Boston, there always seemed to be a prove-it-to-them kind of stage with him. Like, he never had the kind of term and security that uh, he has now in Vancouver. And I know that frustrated him a little bit. I know that bothered him quite a bit. And, you know, this is the thing that, um, you know, some people really thrive under uncertainty. Uh, I don't think he liked it. And uh, I I think the fact that he knows he's gonna be here for a while, that he doesn't have to worry about his contract, that's gonna do wonders for him. Uh, Also, 
you know, they when you go out and you get somebody like him, you put him into position to succeed. It doesn't benefit the Canucks or Jake DeBras to be put anywhere but in a place where he will be has the most chance to be successful. And I expect to see that. I think you know he's proven he can play with good players. He's a finisher, and uh, I think he's going to fit in very, very well in that Vancouver lineup. Like the one thing I look at your team is I. I think you're going to have a few more ways to score than you did last season. And that's a big deal. I mean, ultimately in this league, you have to score to win. And when you're in the same division as teams like Vegas and Edmonton, you really got to score to win. All right, Elliot, let's get into it. Lankin and Demko, Silovs, uh, what are you making of uh, all three of these guys? Uh, give us a little bit uh, of your thoughts on uh, what's going on with the Canucks goaltending situation. First of all, Rick, have you figured out how to pronounce the muscle yet? <laughs> yeah, I did. It's Popl- Popliteus. Popliteus. Yeah, you're doing great. Yeah, <laughs> you can see it just rolls off the tongue. Popliteus. Yeah. Um, uh, so Demko, you know, we've talked about this. Um, I, first of all, I thought Demko did a really good job. I, I really like the fact that he took ownership of it and said, I'm going to yeah. handle this. But the message I got from Thatcher, the, the most important thing I got out of Thatcher Demko last week was, I have learned that there are times I have to dial it back. And, um, you know, I, I think that uh, he is a guy who's not going to rush to come back. I think it's the, the one thing, Rick, is that, you know, knock on wood, you hope this is never an issue again. Um, it's always easier to say that now than it is later in the season. Mm. Like, you know, you never want to deal with this right before the playoffs again. That's a different animal. But right now he clearly is in the frame of mind that, I'm not going to rush back, and I, and I am going to take my time. And I think the Canucks are comfortable with that, and I think the Canucks want that to happen. Um, you know, he talked a little bit about his injury and how unique it was. Um, more detail, obviously, is starting to le- leak out and come out. One of the things I've been told about his injury is the more he just gets used to playing with it, he's going to be able to play with it. Could there be some pain and some lack of comfort from time to time? Yes, but it's not something that's going to be able to stop him to play. Like they, People seem pretty confident about that. But <clears throat> they want him to get used to it. They want him to take his time and be as healthy as he can be. I, you know, you were all over Lankanen. You've been working on that for some time. I think Lankanen was waiting to see if either the Canucks would offer more or another situation would open up. It didn't. He comes in with you guys. You start the year with a with Demko not being ready, I assume, with the Lankanen Seelaws package. There's nothing wrong with that. The Canucks will be just fine with that package. Lankanen's a good goalie. I think, obviously, the bigger question is going to be what happens when Demko is ready to play? Do the Canucks go with three goalies? Do they send Silovs to the minors? You know, he made it pretty clear in the offseason it's not what he wanted. Do you risk losing Lankanen on waivers? I'm not convinced the Canucks are going to want that. They're going to want to keep him around as a, as a, as a security package all year long. But you can punt that decision for now. That's not something you have to worry about now. It's something you've got to worry about down the way. But, you know, I think Silovs needs – I think he's played with the playoffs. I think he's played 19 games, so it's another 41 until he has to go through waivers. And if the Canucks have to do that, I guess they'll just do that. Elliot, I, I, I saw a clip of you raving about a kid named Hunter Biscavich. Yes. So uh, he was uh, – I had a friend who was in Seattle last night to watch Seattle play Calgary, and uh, he had a beautiful assist in the Flames uh, win. And my buddy was texting me, you got to learn how to pronounce this guy's name. you got to learn how to spell this guy's name. He's going to be an NHLer. And I was like, it's one exhibition game. Like, <laughs> Yakumchuk scored a beautiful goal for Ottawa last yep. night against Toronto, and the Sens fans are giving him the they're, – they're awarding him right now the Calder, the Hart, the, the, the Norris, and the Conn Smythe <laughs> trophies. Like, oh, it's, it's the first week. Um, it's early. But there's no question that kid's a talented kid, uh, Rick. And uh, and the Flames wanted him bad. They got him, and he's going to play in the NHL someday. Yep. Hey, um, Elliot, Arthur Silovs, I believe you had some things to say about him. And, and you know, there's yep. a possibility he's going to end up in, in Abbotsford. Yes. I mean, look, I mean, he doesn't need waivers uh, for another, I think, 41 games it is. And, you know, especially with Demko's injury situation, you're probably not going to want to lose Lankanen on waivers. Now, it's not an easy situation to navigate because she loves after the way he played in the playoffs. He obviously thinks he's an NHL goalie and he wants to be up at the NHL level. So unless the Canucks, when Demko is healthy, um, you know, the Canucks, unless they want to carry three goalies, that's something they may have to do. 
but you can deal with that at that time when Demko's ready. And if you're Vancouver, look, at the end of the day, Donnie, the Vancouver Canucks are going into this year thinking we can win the Stanley Cup. And we are going to do everything we can to win the Stanley Cup. And that's why they went out and they got Lankinen. Mm-hmm. And also, that's why they're going to make sure they always have uh, th- they have goalies who can play. And they're going to negotiate Demko. And if they have to make a hard decision, one thing about Jim Rutherford and Patrick Alvin, they're showing that they are not afraid of making hard decisions. Elliot, we uh, we thank you. You're in Montreal, I believe, a Habs and fl- yep. Flyers today uh, in in Montreal, and uh, well, we we uh, appreciate you doing this. Ryan thought you were in Florida because it looks like there's palm trees behind you. I thought you were in Thailand or something. I, uh, you you got the trees or something. Yeah, no, I'm definitely not in Thailand. I, I wish I was in Florida, but you know, I just got a text message from one of my buddies. He said that now I know why you always go on uh, Donnie and Dolly with messy hair. Uh, because when you go on with your hair like this, you look completely bald. So I'll be back with the messy hair in two weeks. Hey, yeah. Elliot, join the club, buddy. Nothing wrong with that club, by the way. I agree. We age gracefully, right, Donnie? We age gracefully. <laughs> you got that right. Rick's hanging on, by the way. Hey, thank, <laughs> th- thanks for this, Elliot. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Speak to you in a couple of yeah. weeks, okay? All right, guys.